Hey everyone, it's Heather from Cooperatives First. This webinar, Emotional Resilience and Effective Stress Management, was recorded on October 19th, 2022. I hope you enjoy this webinar and to check out any of our webinars, just go to cooperativesfirst.com slash webinars. All right, thanks. All right, got it. Well, thanks for the introduction. Um, yes, I work with raccoons and lemurs and students and um, it's they seem disjointed, but they're really not. Um, emotional intelligence is something I've been very interested in for a long time, and I am trained as an economist, and you would think the two definitely don't go together. Well, it turns out that they do, and I've been teaching for a long time, and I find that in teaching our students, we do a very good job of teaching accounting and art history and medicine and engineering and vet med and you name it. What we don't do a good job of is teaching people how to be how to handle stress, how to deal with failure, how to communicate, how to collaborate. And so in finding, um, sort of finding a, a different form of myself through coaching and emotional intelligence, I am better able to teach my students. So the two actually do go hand in hand. So I'm going to talk today very briefly about emotional intelligence and what it is and how that factors into resilience and how to manage your own stress. And I've got a couple of um, a couple of examples. So I'm going to start with this quotation. I love it. The same water that softens the potato hardens the egg. And that really speaks to how we deal with things in the world. It's the circumstances. It's not the circumstances. It's what's inside of us. How do we choose to react to difficulties, to um, opportunities, to challenges? It's up to us. And the beautiful thing about emotional intelligence is that you can learn to be more emotionally intelligent. You can choose to act in a different way to become more successful. So what is it? You've probably all heard of it. You've heard the definition. You've seen it. It seems to be everywhere these days. It's really a set of skills that we have that allow us to understand our own emotions, understand what we're feeling and why, what our triggers are, what sets us off. And that helps us to maintain relationships. How do we communicate with each other? Are we effective in so doing or not so much? It also helps us to rise to challenges, cope with the difficulties of every day, as well as the bigger stresses, those things that sort of come up at us out of the blue, and to use all this emotional information in a way that is effective and meaningful. And what's interesting about it is that um, you've heard of other kinds of intelligence, IQ, that's our measure of academic or intellectual functioning. Unfortunately, especially for me, it, uh, it peaks out at about 25 years old. So um, for me, there's no hope anymore. EQ is the same uh, metric. It's that one number that measures your emotional functioning. But looking at emotional intelligence, that's the overall capacity for learning and using your emotions. And that's what you can, uh, you can enhance through training, focus, being mindful. And you can do so in a way that really helps you to achieve your goals. And it helps you to help others around you. So this comes from psychology. It's not the latest uh, flavor of the month kind of thing. And it basically was uh, developed by a guy named Reuven Bar Own, who asked the question, why is it that some people go through life and they have an easier time with things and the reverse is true. And so what he found was it came down to this idea of emotional intelligence. So this is the model that was developed and it was developed about oh, 40 some years ago and it's since been um, updated. There is an assessment you can take to understand your own emotional intelligence. It's a beautiful, colorful report. You answer 133 questions and you get scores for your overall EI, as well as each of these five areas of emotional functioning and 15 more nuanced areas. So I'm just briefly going to explain it. And then I'm going to pick out a few that help us to be resilient and to manage change and to work better with each other. So let's start with this. Self-perception is probably the most important. This is understanding what your emotions are. And I teach a first level course. So I get a lot of 19, 20 year olds and they will come to me and I'll say, well, tell me what's the matter. How do you feel? And they just sort of grunt and 
and you know move their shoulders so they're not very articulate when it comes to recognizing their emotions explaining them if you understand your emotions and you know what triggers them you can manage them and you can use them in a way that is going to be more successful so it's really about self-regard how confident you are, how you accept yourself, your strengths and your weaknesses, your ability to be self-actualized, to push yourself, to achieve your goals and live your life with meaning. And the most important is the idea of emotional self-awareness, understanding what you're feeling and why, and being able to regulate that. So then we go to self-expression. Once you understand your emotions, then how do you convey them? Are you assertive without being aggressive? Or maybe you're passive aggressive. How can you adjust your ability to express yourself in a way that is conducive to um, working better with others? Um, assertiveness, independence falls under here as well. And it's really about expressing yourself, not just with your words, but your body language and um, your actions, your facial expressions, and your ability to stand on your own two feet and make decisions without emotional support. Then we look at interpersonal realm. This is about how you use your emotions to um, work with other people. Um, to what degree do you care about the greater good? That's social responsibility. To what degree can you form interpersonal relationships that are based on meaning and openness and honesty and trust. And one of the most important, again, especially for leaders, is empathy. Your ability to understand how other people feel and to act appropriately. We move on then to <clears throat> decision-making. This is not decision-making in terms of, yes, I can choose you know, the blue shirt over the red shirt. We all make decisions every day. This is about how your emotions influence your ability to make decisions. Have you ever been driving to work and somebody cuts you off and you're angry and then you drag that anger into your next meeting? That is, um, that's not going to work. If you are not able to separate those emotions when you're making decisions, you can likely, you will likely make a poor decision. So it's about seeing things as they really are. That's reality testing about controlling your impulses, regulating yourself, making decisions in due course so that you don't feel regret. Then we go to stress management. This is a big part of emotional intelligence and it's about how you can manage everyday stress. Individuals who are strong in this regard tend to be flexible. They can accept new information, they can accept change and they know when they're feeling stressed and can um, do something about it. They can go for a walk, they can check out, they can um, do something that's healthy. And finally, people who are strong in terms of stress management tend to be more optimistic. Yes, bad things happen, but you know that with some perseverance, you can manage, um, you can manage and you, things will get better. Yeah, I see a like 24 hour cool off period. Very good uh, suggestion. Take that moment, reset, and then make a decision. Um, I should say now that um, when I'm teaching, I like to invite comments as I go. So if you have comments or you want to put something in the chat box, do so, and we can address them as we go. Um, and I might not see them, so Heather can always stop me uh, whenever. Okay. So having that very brief snapshot of emotional intelligence, we can focus now a little more on resilience and what it is. And there's a couple ways to think of it. <clears throat> you know, there's those big events that we happen that happen like deaths and, you know, sort of more traumatic, but there's also the everyday grind, getting up at the same day, driving in traffic, getting to where you go. Resilience is about adapting to those stresses and rising above them. And, and managing yourself in a way that is healthy. It involves the ability to adapt, to manage your own emotions, knowing that um, you know if, if you're angry all the time and you fly off the handle, that's gonna be difficult. So it's about focusing on positive mental health, um, 
dealing with the daily grind and being optimistic about what's coming in the future, engaging in life and being able to handle stress. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is a little rough. I got, uh, I picked up a, a nice cold in Madagascar and um, I'm running out of fishermen's friends. Okay, so let's give you, we're coming up to uh, maybe a breakout room here. We'll see how this goes. Change can cause stress. Some people handle change really well and others don't. We've got, many people are very traditional. They like things to be the way they are. They don't want any surprises. And yet at the same time, other people say, woohoo, let's change things just to shake things up. When you work together in an organization where you've got people who prefer change and those who don't prefer change, that can lead to additional stress and even conflict. So I'm gonna present you with the scenario and we'll see how different people react. Here's the scenario. You have always started and ended work at the same time, nine o'clock, and uh, maybe you quit at five o'clock. So now management has decided to change the shifts to begin three hours earlier. You are not consulted, and this is mandatory. So imagine now that you have to start at 6 a.m. And that's, that's the way it is. You can do it or you can quit. So what emotions does that invo invoke in you? How do you feel about that initially? Is that something that you accept? Um, what Are they positive emotions or negative emotions around this? What emotions could you use to help you get over the situation, uh, this change, if it's something that you really don't like? And so what I'd like you to do is maybe in small groups of four or five or whatever, discuss your reaction and explain your responses. Think about how you would manage the change. And then when we come back from the breakout group, um, we'll talk about what you've talked about, what you've come up with. How does, how does that sound? You got it. How many minutes do you want it to be? No, let's just go like four or five. Okay. All right. It's going to happen. I'm doing it. Okay. Good, good. Uh, yeah. Any questions before you go off into the ether? Okay. It will be, uh, things are going to happen here. We're going to get assigned to rooms. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm not going to join. So I'll just sit here. Okay. Let's make sure this is working. Looks like it. I think so. Oh, and so since they don't have a microphone, well, that's fine. You can type in your response. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just listen or type. Um, let me see. Coburn's just too, not everyone joined, which is fine. <laughs> um, oh, what is the question? Uh, can we just type the questions in? I'm just going to type the question in the break, in the, uh, what do you call yeah, it? Yeah, I can go, I'll, uh, I'll go back one. Okay. So how, how would you handle this change? Okay. I should have this queued up. I guess I can't see the slides anyway, so. No. <laughs> <clears throat> Forgot about that. Uh, okay, I think I broadcast it out, so it should be yeah, okay here. Good, good. Yeah, just a quick discussion and then. Uh... Okay. Um, I think I've got everybody like successfully in a room. Yeah. Um, good work. <laughs> I listened I to the... some of your, your blog posts. Really good. I could do the tech things. Oh, like my personal one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, yeah just, uh, you know, it's a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, to go from sitting, thinking about it to full on launch and what did I see? Eight episodes. I mean, that's, yeah, we're doing that's it quite major. often. I know it is. It's kind of, it's, yeah. it's cool. So I'm glad, yeah, I'm, glad I'm doing it. Cool. And you're doing it with your brother. So yes. that's, that's something too. So yeah, it is. Well, I thought I, I really was like, I have to do, I have to have a co-host. Like I really, yeah. I need someone to help me maintain the momentum yeah. Um, so yeah, that was the decision yeah. there was to be able yeah. to, um, 
Yeah. And I, I think it was good. I was just sort of searching for the right co-host, I guess. Yeah. Um, no, you've you got know, nice I, banter back and forth and it's just really relaxed and yeah. Well, yes, like quite relaxed. <laughs> but, you know, it's like just one of those things that it's like you just kind of build over time and, you know, you start yeah small and maybe get better at it and maybe you stop doing it and it's okay you know it's just for yeah. you so yeah that's cool no that was yeah. great yep excellent we're actually janice and i are doing a we worked with arctic co-ops in oh, nice. winnipeg yeah, yeah. and we're yeah. doing a, i'm going to winnipeg in november and we're going to be doing okay. a one-day thing with arctic co-ops oh nice some coaching, some training, a whole bunch of stuff going on. Oh, cool. Is that for their, is that when they have their annual meetings or no, that's maybe not it. No, not that exactly happened either. earlier this year. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I forget how many minutes I had. Uh, everybody I have is like, okay, I'll pay attention to the time. And then I didn't do it. Okay. <laughs> so it was about 1222 because people were typing uh okay Tammy type sorry I don't have a microphone so okay just broadcast that yeah I forgot to everything I'm tired and I was putting to putting this together yesterday and I thought oh I didn't even ask you about the breakout rooms so. no it's it's all good I'm ready to roll with whatever basically well that's good yeah, yeah. you got it Excellent. Yeah. So you're at co-op first right now? Or yeah. are you at home? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm in the office. A lot of us have been coming into the office. So oh yeah. 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 I'm obviously in my office. Yeah. <laughs> no barking dogs for a change. Yeah, I um I set up in the boardroom because my kind of desk, you can see people going back and forth to like the microwave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, just so you guys can like eat lunch. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna close the room too. Oh, they've been given 60 seconds. Oh, okay. yeah. No, that's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, I did it wrong. Oh, I see. So when you plus close the rooms, it gives them 60 seconds. Okay. Well, sure. I'm learning. <laughs> We had a trigger finger here. <laughs> I think it, either people can rejoin the room or they can. Um, yeah, okay, well, whatever. I think it, once in, so the 20 seconds are up, then everybody gets yeah, transported. Transported. Yeah, transported mid conversation usually. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Someone's talking. That's like, and we're back. <laughs> eh, it's not super. Recorded. All righty. Okay. Is everybody back for the most part? Um. Yes. Yes. We're here. Yep. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, let's have a uh, discussion. What uh, What did you just talk about? What were negative responses? Positive responses? Um. What did you have to say to each other? Okay, so can I start? Yeah, sure. Carl here, group one. Well, we, we talked about, you know, well, no, the negative mostly came in, but, you know, we didn't really sign up for a three hour earlier day. We were, yeah. right, we, most of us are office people, 8.30. So 5.30 would be a big change. Uh, mm -hmm. We also want to know why, but what if, what if we get told that, well, I'm your boss, that's why, because I'm telling yeah. you, versus explaining, well, this week we need this because, you know, the, the, you know that would be a different reaction too yeah yeah, yeah. For if sure. it's temporary or if it's permanent uh, if we get a good why or no why yep yeah. and I, I was in the same group as carl and uh i think a big thing that we were talking about was mainly as long as like there was communication um yeah. regarding that decision like an understanding of yeah the why but also a certain amount of flexibility to discuss how that transition would happen. 
Um, yeah. but for myself, I have three kids that would impact my morning. I personally have no issue working those hours. It would just be yeah. understanding uh, and being able to communicate openly with my boss about how we could make that work and not yeah. just feel like we're just being told what to do, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's, you know, it's a simple exercise, but it, it leads you to talk about things like, well, flexibility, emotional flexibility, accepting it and the importance of communication and communicating in a way that is appropriate. Other, what other um, topics came up? Was anybody looking at this as a positive change? No. Nope. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Joel. I was with uh, Tyler in the, in the tiny little group. Mm -hmm. uh, if uh, I think we agree that uh, human nature by default will have a pushback on any change. That's mm -hmm. the first initial reaction most of the times to and all kinds of changes. Yeah. Uh, then again, going from there, uh, we were wondering, like in today's reality working world, if this would even be uh, sustainable for any organization coming down to their uh, employees with that, because that could be dangerous. I was just on a call today with someone mm -hmm. in Atlantic with a CEO where they're automating parts of the plants because they're lacking of manpower. So that being set aside, we do believe that, yes, there's going to be some pushback human nature. And yeah. then, you know, it's going to be important to focus on some positives. Uh, for, for example, yeah. everybody is in, in different situations, but I'm already an early person. Uh, early riser. Tyler starts already to work around 6, 6.30 in the morning. So we, it won't really have a big impact. But the other part is, well, I'm going out at the end of the day to bike. Is it going to be nice to go bike at 3 o'clock in the afternoon than rather at 6 or 7 o'clock at night? You know? Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, there is going to be some pushback, we believe. And then it's going to be really individual experiences and attitudes towards the uh, the change. Because that, that change in work, but do we face change uh, everywhere else? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Very good points. And what I like is that you can see some of the positive things. And what tends to happen is you have that initial reaction, your emotions um, rise up when it, you know, it's either it's negative or positive, but then people start talking to each other, they communicate and they can help each other through these changes, but you have to understand the emotions that, that people are feeling and manage those in an appropriate way. Good. Um, so handling stress is about being flexible. It's about being optimistic and understanding what people are going through and being able to make those adjustments. Um, any final comments on this particular change um, before we move on? Did anybody else wanna add anything? Okay. So, uh, you know, we've just been through a big change. So this example isn't, um, isn't really that shocking. We went from, you know, having a normal life to everything shutting down. And now we're moving back into the workplace and there's another change afoot. And those people who are able to deal with it the best are the ones who are going to be able to adapt to that change. And that requires emotional flexibility. And if if you're okay with the change, another way to look at this is how can you use your emotional flexibility and your emotional functioning to help other people who might be struggling. So you can use a coach approach when it comes to these types of things. So change quite often results in conflict and we have different preferences for change. We have different preferences for communication. And if we are not able to communicate our emotions around that, whether we're angry, happy, excited, thrilled, annoyed, uh, feeling left out, whatever it is, then things can go off the rails at work. So it's something to be aware of. And like here I'm at the university and we don't run around talking about our feelings, but when something big comes up, it's the emotions that either drag the progress or hinder um, any change that we wanna implement. It's not the fact that we we're not academically qualified to do our jobs. It's got everything to do with emotions and interactions. So like I say, there are different change style preferences. And when you don't recognize what these are, 
you can be stalled and you can wind up with a lot of conflict and uh, problems that uh, are interpersonal problems. So here's another example. You and your friend agreed to meet for lunch at the last minute and they changed the location. So just putting that out there, you probably all have a different reaction. So um, tell me this, how many, uh, maybe with the show of like the little fake hand there, have a positive reaction to this? How would you feel versus negative reaction? Those who feel positive, anybody wanna vote for that? It's fine, I get to try a new restaurant. Something must have happened. Okay, we're seeing quite a few. No big deal, we'll have to talk about this, interesting. So you guys are very flexible. I see a lot of hands going up, good stuff. Okay, what about the negative reaction? Anybody have that negative reaction? Oh my God, they did it to me again. Now I gotta find parking and I can, you know, lots of emotions come up like that. My friend never considers my feelings. Here we go again. Why does this always happen to me? Blame. Um, there's a couple of hands up for that. So, you know, what's the difference? You actually can choose to have one reaction over another. If you are aware of your emotions, something happens and your initial gut reaction is to is a negative response, you can wait. You can press pause and say, okay, well, let me consider other types of things. And that's, you know, for this example, it's just a personal example. But how can you think about these things at work? What happens if somebody's always late to a meeting? What happens if somebody's interrupting all the time at um you know, at a board meeting or something like that. People who don't contribute, people who contribute too much. How are your emotions affecting your ability to communicate? So this exercise is really designed to help you think about what's your gut reaction? What's your first reaction? And is it positive? Is it conducive to working better with people? Or is it throwing a wrench into things? So just being mindful of that can go a long way to helping you develop better better um, relationships. Any questions or comments about this? Nope. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, no questions or comments, sorry. Okay, Pretty good. easy, pretty easy. Yeah. If there's food involved, I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so emotions around change are, they can be enthusiasm, excitement, it can be happiness, it can be sadness, indifference, numbness. People feel all, a whole range of emotions, fear, anger, looking at the negative, depression, confusion, grief. So when you make a change at work or something happens to you that you can't, you don't have any control over, you can feel the whole gamut of things. Being aware of those emotions goes a long way to being able to manage those emotions. So the emotional skills from that big wheel that will help you to be resilient, to handle change, to deal with the daily grind are emotional self-awareness, understanding your own emotions. If you're not somebody that really can put your finger on your emotions, you might want to sit down and, and, and journal or look at a feelings wheel to say, okay, well, what exactly am I feeling and why am I feeling that way? Um, second is emotional expression. Are you willing to say how you feel? We've all been in the room where something has happened and you notice that one person is not happy because while they're not expressing it verbally, they're sitting there like that, they're not contributing. So they're, they're expressing themselves. Being able to articulate how you feel is very important. Who has had these, who has given the silent treatment? Probably like a lot of hands go up. How do you feel when you're on the, the receiving end of the silent treatment? Not good. You, you know something's wrong. It's impossible not to know. But if you know what it is, then you can begin to fix the problem and discuss it. So expression is so important. And empathy is one of the most important things. Being able to listen to your colleagues, your, uh, your friends, your coworkers, your uh, direct reports, everybody. And I don't know that we do a very good job of listening and acknowledging that we've heard other people. So these are skills that you can use and you can hone to be able to help you communicate better. Reality testing, seeing things as they really are. 
we can be all doom and gloom. We can also be, oh yeah, I'll get that report to you by Friday. And you know that there's no chance and you know what, that, that anybody's going to see that report. So seeing things as they are, being objective is another emotional skill that can help you manage stress. Being flexible and taking the time to cope with situations. If you need time off, whether it's two minutes or two hours, it's important to be able to recognize that and act on it. And then the last one is optimism. Optimism is not blind optimism. It's not standing in a burning building saying, oh, everything's going to be fine. It's about recognizing that things are not fine right now, but bad things don't last forever. And having a positive outlook and taking positive action to be able to change those things. So those are all skills that you can hone to better manage your stress and, and problems. This is an example of the feelings wheel that um, I just mentioned. So if you're somebody or you work with somebody who can't express how they're feeling, I use this with my students. They come into my office, I bust out this big wheel and I, it's like, tell me what's going on. And if they are able to say that they were let down versus uh, what do we got here um, under angry, maybe they're let down, maybe they felt ridiculed. Those differences in feelings are going to lead to different solutions. So that's why it's important to be able to say how you feel, because then you can address the situation. So this is called the feelings wheel. And if you Google it, you will see many different versions of it. But basically, it has the same seven emotions in the middle, and then they become more nuanced as you as you move out. And it's it's really useful to be able to help uh, in discussions. So sometimes people can point to something and then you can take it from there. So that's a good resource. Um, in terms of empathy and reality testing, when you're working with through a change or through a stressful situation, to what extent are you actually listening? When we converse with each, each other, it's always like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, really? I thought blah, blah, blah. You know, and you go back and forth. But when you're listening, it's about tell me more. How do you feel? I noticed that, you know, you're a little bit tense. When you listen to people, you're listening to their emotions, you're listening to what they're saying and not saying, how they're saying, saying it, and you're acknowledging that. People want to be seen, heard, and understood. And that is probably one of the best things you can do at work um, or, you know, with your family and friends is to be there to listen and not necessarily give advice. Um, the other piece of this is reality testing, seeing things as they actually are, and checking, asking people how they feel, tuning into them, and um, instead of making assumptions about what people are feeling or their beliefs, you can ask them. And so to this, <clears throat> I've got an interesting little video here, and uh, it's about empathy. It's just, there's all this pressure, you know? And sometimes it feels like it's right up on me and I can just feel it, like literally feel it in my head and it's relentless. And I don't know if it's going to stop. I mean, that's the thing that scares me the most is that I don't know if it's ever going to stop. Yeah. Well, you do have a nail in your head. It is not about the nail. Are you sure? Because, I mean, I'll bet if we got that out of there. Stop it, trying to fix it. No, I'm not trying to fix it. I'm just pointing out that maybe the nail is causing. You always do this. You always try to fix things when what I really need is for you to just listen. No, see, I don't think that is what you need. I think what you need is to get the nail. See, you're out. not even listening now. Okay, fine. I will listen. Fine. It's just, sometimes it's like, there's this achy, I don't know what it is. And I'm not sleeping very well at all. And all my sweaters are snagged. I mean, all of them. That sounds really hard. It is. Thank you. Ow! Oh, come on. If you would just don't <laughs> try to speak things out. All right. <clears throat> Oops, just... we got to move forward. Here we go. 
Uh, thoughts on the on the listening? <laughs> Has anybody been in a situation where you just wanted to, you just needed to talk, but you didn't want uh, an answer? No comments. Uh, I think we've always been. We've all been there. Yeah, yeah. Um, you could probably see both sides, right? We tend to be fixers. You're educated. You have solutions. You do your jobs really well. And um, not everybody wants advice. They just want to be able to talk about certain things, maybe just to to flesh things out. And so holding back sometimes is difficult, but it can be very powerful if you're just willing to sit and listen and acknowledge what somebody else is going through. And that can help them to solve their own problem. What's up, Winnie? Other, other comments? All right. Okay, so stress tolerance, flexibility, optimism. You have a choice to use your emotions either positively or negatively. Um, you can take a positive approach by being proactive to learn to help other people to um, to work through difficult situations. You probably also know people who take a negative approach. This is never going to work. I can't believe it. I'm frustrated. So what's going on with your emotions is um, is not helpful to solve different solve different kinds of problems. So be aware of your automatic response. Is it more positive or more negative? And how can you flip it? How can you change your response to deal with things in a different way if that's something that could help you? Um, dealing with resilience or being resilient has a lot to do with control. And having that sense of self-efficacy can help shape uh, outcomes in your life to be more positive. So again, there's a spectrum. You might believe that there's absolutely nothing you can do about things. And that, that's true. You know, there is um, sometimes structurally, there are things that you cannot do. You cannot be flexible. Um, but by the same token, you can manage yourself. You can manage your emotions to be flexible and have that sense of control. So to what extent do you believe that you are in control of your own life? Individuals who do believe that tend to be happier, they tend to be more productive, and they're better able to resolve problems and to manage stress. So if I give you this list, what would you say that you have control over? What's in your control on this list? Anything stand out to you? Or the reverse, what, what do you not have control of? Anything stand out? No control on gossip. Anybody want to counter that? You might not be able to control gossip to a certain extent, but you definitely have a choice to either quote unquote listen to it or not. Yeah, I, I think that's a very important point. People might gossip, but it's your choice to either participate in it or not, to rise above it or to try to try to change that. Yeah, you don't have a choice about what opinion people have of you. So how do you manage that? How do you deal with it? Getting a promotion. What about that? Would you say you have control over that or no control? I was kind of leaning towards no control. Well, not no control. You have some control. I mean, you can perform well, but like, what if the organization doesn't have a budget to offer you like more, you know, or that don't have a role or they, you know, it's just not there. It's not, it's not just because you do well doesn't, doesn't equal that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So and, you, and, sorry, and it doesn't mean it needs to be in the same organization where you are. So if you're open-minded and you're ready and you're performing, then there might be some opportunities outside. Yeah. Let's not be limited by the options. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So there's any one of these things on the list you can look at differently. 
And you will find that if you are one of those people who thinks you have no control over anything, um, life is going to be a little bit difficult. So it's about your perspective. If you believe that you do have control and you can make decisions, then you're going to feel like you have a lot more agency in the choices you make and the outcomes that occur. So it's just a, a small example of how people think differently when it comes to any kind of things that are going on in our lives. Um, let me go. Okay, so we talked about this already. So managing stress tips. Understanding your emotions goes a long way to being able to handle stress and deal with things. If you are aware of how you feel, look at the feelings wheel. Is it anger? Is it frustration? Putting, pinpointing that and being able to articulate that can help you move to um, an outcome. Being expressive, articulating your needs. It's okay in the workplace to say that you are feeling um, a negative emotion and where that comes from, expressing it appropriately and not aggressively or not passively aggressively will improve communication because then people know where you're coming from and people tend to um, respect that more when they understand. Getting engaged and managing your stress, making those decisions requires you to be aware of your emotions and to regulate your actions. Being flexible with change, accepting new ideas, new perspectives, even though you might uh, not like change, being able to um, consider different things can help you to learn and can help others to learn so that you can get through a change process in a way that is maybe less painful. Um, and then perspective on control. What's within your control? What is absolutely not in your control? How do you view these things? And making and how can you make decisions so that you can move forward? And I believe I'm at the end. So I'll open it up for, for questions or comments. Thanks, Haley. I just wanted to jump in and say that, you know, I always like to say that um, like everyone in the world is basically a kindergartner, just some of us have adult bodies. Um, I, I say this because I have like a four-year-old and she's like a six-year-old, so I understand how they operate. And it's funny when you even think about introducing the sort of the concept of emotions into an exchange, like um, you're talking with a client and you suddenly think, okay, well, that's what they're saying, but ask you asking yourself what are they feeling like are they feeling scared optimistic overconfident um uncertain like or you know like what but rushed like tired I, I you yeah. know some of those things like from personal life like it's uh, it starts to help you understand um like what you might do to help them better or if they react like weirdly <laughs> that doesn't align with how you assume they would react it it can yeah. give you can kind of fill in the blanks um with that you know um yeah it's any other yeah. what's that i said it's a great point and you know people think well there's no place for emotions at work but we're emotional beings we you can't just leave your emotions at the door it's who we are and if we're better able to manage them and recognize them in each other, I think we can be much more effective at what we do. And we can have much better relationships with the people that we're surrounded by. Anybody wanted to, I have a thing on my like kids. We have like little like things that they get little, you know, stars or whatever, just kind of celebrating little successes. And the one is um, named an emotion with a word. <laughs> <laughs> so like how are you feeling sad I'm like okay you did it yeah. um yeah just name it um, I'm going back to the Mel Robbins quote here <laughs> I, it was quite a while it's like slide number two hang on anybody want to ask any questions yeah or maybe you're in like a really sticky like interpersonal situation that you want Haley to weigh in on <laughs> yeah 
it's that's the thing you know it works when we go through these workshops somebody says well i'm gonna go home and talk to my husband about this or wife or whatever partner mm -hmm. all right I have a little scenario I'm dealing with right now. I coach senior girls volleyball and I've got a lot of raging hormones, gossiping that happens at school and just, you know, a, a lot of things that really cause issues. And I actually have to sit down with one of the girls and, um, but of course I have to do it with other adults and, and whatnot involved. I'm not just going to do this one-on-one. -on -one, right. And, uh, yeah, it's really hard for me to keep keep my cool when you know that you're right. But I'll yeah, also have that, to remember that she's a teenage girl and she's got a lot of learning to do. So that's it's difficult. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, some sometimes what you can do is reset the norms. You can sit down with the whole group, not single anybody out. Make sure the whole group is there and talk about how you want to behave, how do you want, who you want to be as a collective. And what I, ha I have my students do this when they work in groups. And so they have to decide what's acceptable when it comes to communication, what's not acceptable and how they're going to um, keep each other in check. And so um, things like that tend to work if you do it at the outset and say, well, let's, let's have a conversation about, you know, what's what's been going on so you don't have to single anybody out but give give everybody a chance to say something make sure everybody does chime in yeah absolutely I mean I know all the girls know that mm -hmm. this one she's like a cancer on the team and it's really frustrating but we're all about inclusivity and you know that type of yeah 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 thing. so yeah I've given myself a 72 hour cool off period <laughs> okay <laughs> Yeah. The, the other thing is like, why is this person acting out? Um, you might have a conversation with her about what, you know, the emotions, show her the feelings wheel and say, what's, tell me how you're feeling. Maybe this is somebody who can't explain what she's feeling and she's acting out and being a bit obnoxious or a lot obnoxious and um, take it from there. Yeah. I feel for you. Uh yeah, no, good point. And, and I think sitting down with all of them. Yeah, it's not it's not easy, especially when, you know, my daughter's one of them on the team, and I don't want her to get backlash later on, because the coach is being a quote, unquote, bitch to them. <laughs> yep, yep. It's, a, it's a delicate situation. Oh, yeah, yeah it sure is. <clears throat> Instead of telling them to you can use a coach approach by saying, you know, what's working, what's not working and have them chime in and have them contribute to a solution to whatever's going on. Uh, I find people buy into that more. If you right. come and say, hey, you don't Absolutely. do this. Yeah, they say, well, that was your solution. Doesn't work for me. They, when it's their solution, they're more likely to be committed. True. Yeah. yeah. I can vouch for the coach approach because Haley coached me and uh, it worked. Uh, <laughs> I had a goal and I did it. Right, Haley? You can vouch yeah, for it. Yeah, yeah. You did it in spades, I have to say. I did it. Uh, yeah, we identified this goal. And it was funny being coached, like the recipient of it. I started to realize that like I had no wiggle room, but to rise to meet my goal because I had set it and I had no excuses left, I guess. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, it's getting a little personal, I guess. But uh, yeah, no, it was really like, because when someone just kind of patiently asks you those questions and then you have to come up with a solution, you're like, well, geez okay I guess this is like I have no other rocks to hide under this is what I have to do I said it I must do it or say I'm not doing it and live with that yeah 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 that word accountability is sometimes difficult but um very mm -hmm. effective yeah I was accountable to myself <laughs> I was yeah. either going to let myself down or was going to do it so yeah. um, well, that's powerful. It's, it that's is powerful. It was really cool. And I, I just, I don't know, I, I just love to just like a good reminder to just consider what emotions are in the feelings wheel. I had a therapist present me with that. I, after I had my second child, I was going this, and I was like, what is this <laughs> crazy graph? <laughs> I'm like, 
what are you kidding me with this um, wheel? I was like, I know what my feelings are. And then I was like, I have no idea what my feelings are. <laughs> I had to admit myself, I was not as self-aware as I thought I was. Um, so I think it really works. Um, okay, well, I think that's everything. I'll send off, I'll have this uploaded on the website. And um, I realized I stopped, forgot to stop recording during our breakout session. So I'm gonna have to like cut the middle section. So it's not just like us chatting or whatever. So um, about me not knowing how to run the breakout rooms. <laughs> So um, I'll cut that out and then we'll upload it on the website um, afterwards. And um, also, I mean, please feel free to um, look Kaylee up online. I mean, you'll find lots of links uh, about, you know, the <laughs> her many ventures, but EI Advantage is the one related to yeah. the, um, the coaching. And um, yeah, so um, yeah. I'd like to invite you to check out some of the things that she's uh, working on there and some of the resources they have on their site and um, a little bit more um, on there. Um, and also I would recommend like this, the staff thing too is really interesting. The one we did the kind of, because we had aggregate scores. And so we, we scored really high on what was the, like it was kind of care for others, yeah, right? Social like, responsibility. I we think were all was... really highly on social, well, working for a nonprofit. It was like, if we didn't, I would have to ask like what was happening. Um, so it was really cool to see those aggregate scores as well. So um, thanks so much for joining. Next month, I'm back with a webinar on aging in place and sort of housing solution ideas, options, uh, a couple different things. So um, that should be an interesting one as well, uh, where we're focused on kind of what it might look like for communities to consider um, you know, seniors housing options in their community and maybe some some options that you maybe hadn't considered or had considered, but want to, you know, hear from someone who's kind of a little bit further down the road on that topic. So that's what we're on. Um, that's what we're on next week or next week, uh, next month. Please don't come next week. I will be here. Um, <laughs> and then uh, and then in December, I'm talking about um, home-based business scale up. I mean, it's coming to Christmas. So I thought let's talk about how to support some of those home-based businesses um, in your community to maybe help them scale up go a little bit bigger, sell somewhere else. They kind of band together. So we'll, we're, we're going to talk to a couple of people who are supporting home-based businesses um, and uh, and talk a little bit more about supporting those. And um, yeah, so I think that should be really great. So thank you so much, Haley, um, for joining. Thank and you. thanks for everyone to joining the webinar. And I hope you have a great afternoon. Good. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. Oh.